Hi, I'm Steve Gorton and since 1996 I've been working helping organisations through change and to develop their leaders. What I want to talk about today is soft skills for hard results. We know there are a whole range of figures on the success of change. Some people say it's successful 40% of the time, 60% of the time. Forbes, which was a source I read back in the early 90s when I was doing my MBA, said 20% um, of the time. So who want to invest in that? They're sort of old figures, but something uh, from last year by Morehouse, uh, a report suggested change works 20% of the time. Okay, it's a figure. More important were the differences. Who perceived it to get to that 20%? Middle managers felt it was 5% of the time the benefits were realised, whereas the board felt 37% of the time the benefits were realised. So why such a discrepancy? What is it about people at the top of the organisation and those elsewhere? Why is there this difference in perception of success? And for me, it's about the way people think. I think it's also about do people actually think about what they're doing in the first place? So why is there failure in change? For me, it's often about people's egos. New chief executive comes in, needs to do something in three months big risk, vested interests including shareholder pressure and knee-jerk reactions and particularly the culture. Lots of people will blame the culture uh, as you know ingrained and we can't change it. The alternative way is beginning to think about why don't we work with the culture, look at the strengths of that and work with the grain rather than against the grain to develop things for the future. Another issue of failure is people take a siloed partial view rather than the big picture holistic strategic view. So how can we be more successful with change? Let's first of all stand back, look at the big picture, look at it strategically as well as operationally and tactically and this really means including the people. Coming back to the soft skills for hard results. So another way is let's not just look at people's minds with a whole range of change models, let's also think about their hearts as well. What is it that we need to do to really get people involved? If we go to Cotter's work, he talks about having a guiding coalition to make stuff happen. But often for many organisations, they take half that message on and they look at the top people. The really effective way here is taking a diagonal slice of people across the organisation, a range of functions and a range of levels. Choose those who want to make things work for the organisation. Choose also some of the people who may be a bit resistant to get them engaged. So for me, Change strategy is really about winning the hearts and minds. Etsy own his work from 1971 talks about do we get people to comply, do we get people to accept, do we get people to own the change. Compliance almost coercion, acceptance fair days work for a fair days pay. We can, we can appreciate this intellectually but where we really get the benefit from change it's about getting people to own this, really engage with it. And so the more our change process and change strategy moves towards the ownership rather than the compliance, the greater the success levels. So what is the outcome here? The outcome here is engage your people, work with the culture rather than against it, um, get people involved across the board, not just engage them but across the board, and then look at the elevated levels of success.